friends once again welcome you back to ibs platform that is today the revision part number 2 will be examined today it also consists of 100 points uh, these all the entire points has been prepared based on the uh, memory memorized questions from past examination so we think it will be useful to you so kindly share this video to your friends also who are at doing this examination shortly it will be uploaded in the ibs youtube channel so that you can uh, view it and you can learn what exactly the points so we i am starting this with your permission 101 point number 1 today banks should ensure ensure that agents engaged by them for debt collection should refrain from actions that could damage the integrity and reputation of the bank so at more no point of time any action should not damage the integrity and the reputation of the bank so that is the most important point point number 2 the bank will explain to the customer that emi which stands for equated monthly installments includes interest and principal due from the customers so from examination point of view emi includes interest as well as principal so debt recovery agent is explaining to the customer the importance of remittance of emi in due dates bank's security reposition policy is aimed at recovery of dues in the event of default yesterday we have seen that the each bank should have a policy that policy policy should describe the reposition what are all the steps and what are all the things the bank as well as the debt recovery agent has to follow while reposition the assets from the customer so here the reposition policy is aimed at recovery of dues in the event of default so only in the event of default bank is invoking this policy so if there is no default there is no question of reposition of assets point number 4 identity and authority of persons authorized to represent bank for follow up and recovery of dues would be made known to the borrowers at the first instance so immediately upon appointment of the debt recovery agent by the bank it has to convey the details regarding the agent to the customer that is the borrower his telephone number his name etc the debt recovery agreement between the bank and the debt recovery agent or the agency is a contractual arrangement that is legally binding on both i told yesterday this is a contract between the debt recovery agent and the principal that is the banker based on indian contract act basically a contract of agency so this is a contractual arrangement any contract it is legally enforceable both the parties communication is the process of exchanging information ideas and thoughts between at least two persons in order to create a common understanding so there should be minimum two persons to communicate a single person cannot communicate himself so there should be minimum two persons and the communication is nothing but a process of exchanging information or ideas or thoughts a good recovery agent should be a good communicator as well as a good listener maybe the, this may be a repeated question yesterday also we have seen so a good recovery agent should have a good communicate communication skill as well as listening skill he should listen it what the other person is telling and then only he can communicate what exactly is in his mind the rights and duties of recovery agents will be essentially those of an agent and governed by the provisions of indian contract act and also the regulatory guidelines of reserve bank of india and indian banks association 
So there are certain provisions which are contained in the Indian Contract Act. Based on that, guidelines have been issued by Reserve Bank of India and the Indian Banks Association to govern or to describe the rights and duties of a recovery agent. He is having a certain set of rights, simultaneously having certain set of duties. The Contract Act contains the general provisions of the law which will apply where the agreement between the bank and the recovery agent is silent or doubtful. Because sometimes the bank may enter into an agreement with a debt recovery agent. They might have given so many points in that agreement. But if any aspect is silent, which is not conveyed to the agent through the agreement, then it is presumed that such conditions which are or provisions which are contained in Indian Contract Act will automatically apply. So here from examination point of view, if any point is silent in the agreement between the banker and the debt recovery agent, then the provision, general provisions of the law, that will apply. DRA, debt recovery agent, will document the efforts made for the recovery of dues and the copies of communication, <coughs> if any, <coughs> sent to the customer will be kept on record. So each and every one study we have seen, each and every act of the debt recovery agent should be documented. He should write it in a diary, daily diary. He should make all points clear what are all the conversation happened that day. Copies of communication, if any, available. So these things has to be documented and kept on record. Sometimes in a late on a later date, it may be required to pursue a case in the court of law. DRA should not threaten with imprisonment or even mention the imprisonment unless legal action planned or currently underway could result in imprisonment. Sometimes some of the violation that will be equal to a punishment under criminal code. That means imprisonment. But even though there is a provision even though there is a chance of imprisonment, but that should not be taken as a point to threaten the customer. So DRA should not threaten the customer with imprisonment, even though there is a mention about this in the legal scenario. That recovery agent should not threaten with arrest detention by police. He cannot threaten the customer that if you are not remitting the installment, you will be arrested or you will be detained under police custody. He is not supposed to threaten the customer like that. DRA should not accept gifts from the customer or bribes of any kind. A DRA on being offered a bribe or payment of any kind by a customer must report the offer to the bank. Suppose sometimes the customer may offer some gifts. Otherwise, he may try to bribe the DRA in order to slow down the process recovery process but this has to be con communicated to the bank by the debt recovery agent the debt recovery agent on visit to the customer's place should respect privacy and personal space of the customer he should respect the privacy of the customer he should even give sufficient attention for keeping personal space he has to, he is not supposed to enter into the house without the permission of the customer. He should not uh, go close to the customer or his family members. So there are certain written down rules. If the customer declines to pay, the consequences of such a decision are to be explained to him. If suppose after repeated communication, the customer is denying he is not making the payment then the consequences of non-payment can be highlighted by the debt recovery agent. One of the key commitments of banking codes and standards is that the bank will not discriminate any customer on the basis of race, gender, marital status, religion, or disability. It is 
without any discrimination there should not be any discrimination while dealing with a customer this is applicable both for the bank as well as the debt recovery agent there should not be any discrimination between race gender marital status religion disability the standard assets where the payment of principal or interest is overdue or past due is called special mention account that means there is a gap between the standard asset and non performing asset to the tune of 90 days so if there is no default the asset is a standard asset if it is having a default after 90 days on 91st day it will become np yesterday we have seen that so in between this there are 90 days this period this 90 days this asset can be classified as a special mention account special attention is required for the banker and the debt recovery agent on such type of accounts it can be represented in three categories overdue from one day to 30 days can be categorized under sma0 from 31st day to 60 days it can be categorized under sma1 from 61st day to 90 days it can be categorized under sma days are most important in examination they will ask suppose there is an overdue in a particular account for 14 days then what is the category of that asset 14 days means it is coming under the first category one day to 30 days so 14 days definitely in sma zero category the loans and advances of the bank are its assets and the deposits of the banks are its liability that means the bank is having assets as well as liabilities simultaneously whenever it is accepting deposit the deposit is a liability whenever it is granting a loan the loan is an asset so you have to remember this deposit is a liability loan is a asset for the bank in the case of deposit accounts the relationship between the banker and the customer is that of debtor and the creditor so there are several relationship between the banker and a customer in a deposit account the relationship is debtor and creditor you have to buy hard this similarly in a loan account the relationship is creditor and debtor in the case of collection of checks the relationship is agent and principal in the case of safe deposit locker the relationship is lesser and lessee in case of any valuables being accepted for safe custody the relationship is bailey and bailer suppose a borrower is hypothecating his vehicle to the banker for securing a loan then in respect of that security hypothecated there is a different relationship which is known as hypothecate and hypothecator similarly if there is an assignment assignment of lic policy for taking a loan from a bank the customer and the banker is having a special relationship the banker is the assignee and the customer is the assigner similarly in a mortgage transaction immovable property can be mortgaged to the bank for securing a loan there the relationship is mortgager and mortgagee that is the banker is the mortgagee and the customer is the mortgager nomination can be in the name of an individual only it's most important point only one person can be nominated in a deposit account and that too that nominee should be an individual it cannot be an entity it cannot be a trust it cannot be a company it cannot be a firm so only an individual can be nominated in a deposit account so the nominee should be individual and only one nomination is permitted in deposit account if the check is crossed as account payable then the amount of the check can be credited only to the account of the payee if there is a crossing in the check drawing two trans uh, transverse parallel lines on the face of the check left corner that is known as crossing if between the crossing there is an encryption as to account payee only 
then that check can be paid only to the account of the payee. That means the payee is the third person. Drawer is the first person. Drawee is the second person. And the payee is the third person in a check. The payee is the person who is receiving the funds. So only to his account, whose name is mentioned in the check, only to his account, bank account only, the banker can effect the payment. Normally, bank prefer account pay and payable to order check for loan repayments. In the case of loan repayment, bank usually takes post-dated checks, which are prominently known as PDCs. Even debt recovery agent is accepting similar checks from the customer when he is calling on the customer for the purpose of recovery. There, normally the debt recovery agent as well as the bank prefer to get a check which is crossed account pay only or even at least minimum it should be an order check. So check can be an order check and as well as bearer check. IFSE, Indian Financial System Code. It is 11 digit alpha numeral code. So this 11 digit is most important. And even that explanation is important. Indian Financial System Code, IFSE. IFS code, we, we will call it as IFS code. RTGS represents real-time gross settlement, whereas NEFT represents national electronic fund transfer. Both are now available 24 into 7. That means 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week. Earlier it was not like that. Recently, RTGS has been put under 24 into 7 category. So definitely sometimes question may be asked from this area. So RTG is also 24 into 7, NEFT also 24 into 7. These are the two electronic major media where funds transfer is being affected by the bank. Funds transfer means sending fund from one person's account to another person's account. KYC to be comply complied for all types of accounts. That means all types of customers, individuals, partnership firms, companies, society, trust. So whoever may be the customer of the bank, KYC is to be complied with. While complying KYC, there are two aspects yesterday we have seen. One is identity, another one is address. When you talk about address, what type of proof can be given under address? Utility bills normally, people will give utility bills, that is postpaid telephone bill, electricity bill, water connection bill. Similarly, any utility bill which are not older than two months can be accepted as an address proof. So here, not older than two months is most important point to note. Even copy of the rent agreement can be accepted. They can be accepted as address proof. But normally ration card, the bank is not encouraging. The term customer has been defined under KYC guidelines issued by Reserve Bank of India under anti-money laundering as well as FATF guidelines which are issued to implement the PMLA, Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. So where a customer is being defined, normally in every examination, DRA examination, in a way or other, they will ask this question. Customer is a person who is maintaining an account with a bank. Where it is defined? It has not been defined in any act so far. It has not been defined in any act so far. No act has defined customer so far. But the Reserve Bank of India, in its KYC guidelines, based on the AML and the FATF guidelines, customer has been defined. It has been defined as a person who is maintaining an account with a bank, who is maintaining a, con a customer based relationship with the bank. So, examination, if the question comes, in which act has defined customer? No act has been defined. Only KYC guidelines have defined customer. As per section 5, subsection B of Banking Regulation Act 1949, banking is accepting deposits from the public for the purpose of lending or investment. This we have seen yesterday. 
So section 5 subsection B is the most important one. Yesterday we have not described that section. So section 5 subsection B of which act? Banking Regulation Act 1949. In savings account, interest is calculated on daily balance basis. Savings account, a person can invest money and he can withdraw money. So whatever is the balance available at the end of the day, on a daily balance means at the end of the day, what is the balance available in the account that will be reckoned for calculating interest on that account. Cash credit, overdraft, demand loan, term loan, bill finance, etc. are fund-based credit limit. Whereas bank guarantee, letter of credit, etc. are examples of non-fund-based credit limit. Fund-based means the bank is giving funds immediately. Immediately after sanctioning the loan, the bank is parting with the fund. Whereas non-fund-based business, the bank is not giving money immediately. It is under it is under it undertakes to give the money only if it is warranted in a future date. If it is warranted, that means it is contingent. It may or may not be warranted to make the payment. So that is why the bank guarantee and letters of credit are known as non-fund-based limit. There we are, no bank is not parting with funds immediately. So examination, this is most important. Cash credit, whether it is a fund-based limit or non-fund-based limit, you have to answer it correctly. It is a fund-based limit. Simultaneously, they can ask a letter of credit, whether it is a fund-based limit or non-fund-based limit, then you have to answer it is a non-fund-based limit. For that only, this point, 135. Next point is term loans, including for agricultural purpose. Term loans which are including for agricultural purpose are given for a specific purpose. Repayable beyond one year. You take the points in 135. The cash credit account, it has to be repaid within 12 months. Overdraft, it has to be repaid within 12 months. Whereas the demand loan and term loan, it has to be repaid only after a period of one year. That means the repayment period is more than one year. Whereas cash credit, overdraft and bill finance, the repayment period is less than one year. So they are known as short term credit and term loans and demand loans are known as medium term and long term credit. <clears throat> In case of vehicle loans and consumer loans, consumer loans means sometimes bank may grant loan to purchase a refrigerator or a television set. For that purpose, bank may sometimes grant loan. So then the charge is by way of hypothecation. There are five different charges for a bank when it is granting loan. The first of its kind is lien. The second one is pledge. The third one is hypothecation. The fourth one is mortgage. The fifth one is assignment. So it depends upon the nature of security, different charges being created by the customer in favor of the banker. So hypothecation charge is suitable for a movable asset. So vehicle is a movable asset. Consumer loans, that is for refrigerator or TV or grinder or mixie, whatever may be the items we are using in the home that are consumer items. So they are also movable. So the charge applicable for such assets are hypothecation. The borrower will be owner of the vehicle from the day one in bank loan. Whenever you are granting a loan, if the grantor of the loan is a bank, then from that moment, the vehicle will be the vehicle owner will be the customer. It is it is being registered in the name of the customer only. But in the case of higher, higher purchase, higher purchase in the sense, suppose an NBFC is granting a loan, Sundaram Finance is granting a loan, vehicle loan to a customer. There, the borrower will become the owner of the vehicle after payment of all the installments because there only the higher purchase charge has been registered. In our case, bank case, hypothecation charge is being registered in the RC book. So, hypothecation means the owner will be the customer. Higher purchase means the owner will be the customer only after remitting the entire installment till then the owner will be the banker, the creditor. A term loan will become NPA if the principal or the interest is overdue for more than 90 days. So this more than 90 days is most important when you study NPA. When a term loan will become NPA? If it is overdue, if the installments are overdue for more than 90 days. After 90 days, this is special mention account only. On the 91st day, 
if the overdue continues continuously that is also most important then on the 91st day we can call that asset as non performing asset a cash credit or overdraft account will become npa if the account remains out of order for more than 90 days there also the concept is 90 days but the only word we have changed is out of order in the case of term loan the word we have used is overdue because it is to be repayable in installments whereas in cash credit it can be remitted and taken back frequently <clears throat> so the act word is not overdue here we will use only out of order so out of order is matching to cash credit or overdraft whereas overdue is matching to loans all type of loans drt the full form is debt recovery tribunal will take the matters relating to recovery of non performing asset if the dues to be recovered is 20 lakh and above so here rupees 20 most prominent one from the examination point of view that means if a bank is preferring a suit in a court of law for a due bank dues of rupees 20 lakh or above it can only approach a drt it cannot approach a civil court so 20 lakh and above is for drt below 20 lakhs that can be filed in a civil court suit cannot be filed for recovery in time barred cases as per section 3 of limitation act every document is having a life period the life period is described in limitation act if a banker is filing a suit after the life period that is the expiry period of the document then that suit cannot be filed in the court court will not accept it the period mentioned in the limitation act is known as the limitation period so each document is having such a period in case of a willful defaulter the recovery agent should collect preserve and send copies of the documentary evidence regarding the conversation between the borrower and the agent to the banker for further action because he is a willful defaulter yesterday we have seen who are all the willful defaulters amount is there cash is there with the customer but he is not remitting the installments he is a willful defaulter we have given a loan to purchase a car but he has used that amount for some other purpose he is a willful defaulter we have seen a study those kind of things if happens and where the recovery agent is approaching after assessing him as a willful defaulter by the bank then each and every transaction conversation has to be recorded misrepresentation of fact by debt recovery agent is prohibited in india as well as in uk and us so misrepresentation conveying wrong information to the customer misrepresent the facts these are all prohibited in india uk as well as usa major countries are having similar policies disclosing the details of the customer's debt with the third parties use of abusive language in recovery process by the recovery agent and threatening the customer that we will take legal action or arrest of the customer by the we if there is non payment of installment these things are not permitted in india in uk as well as in usa so disclosing the details of the customer debt is also not permitted you are not supposed to disclose anything regarding the details of the customer's account to any third party suppose you are approaching a customer on the way you are asking for inquiries you are asking so and so whether he is residing nearby then the person standing there he will definitely ask sir for what purpose you are approaching you are not supposed to convey anything regarding the loan you have to just to give an information that you want to see the customer you are actually you have to identify the customer only some general thing you can convey that is the meaning of this persuasive skill means establishing a good rapport a good connection that is the skill persuasive skill you can persuade the customer you can persuade the customer to understand the intricacies if he is failing remitting installments so only a good persuader can do that recovery agent we do not have the right to delegate the authority you are a recovery agent 
you cannot delegate your authority to some other person you cannot ask any other person you please go there and ask him because i am on the way to my home i have to rush back to my home so instead of me you approach the customer that is not possible because agent cannot further delegate agent is also a delegate is it not so the agent the delegate cannot further delegate already he is a delegate he cannot further delegate that is the rule making the telephone call to the debtor by the recovery agent is the first step in recovery process first you have to make a call to the customer before going to meet him while making the first telephone call to the customer for recovery of the dues a recovery agent should disclose his identity authority to collect the dues he has to show the authority letter given by the bank and also discuss the customer about the payment of dues so first you have to introduce yourself who, who who are you then you have to show the identity authority letter given by the bank and then you can discuss only after that you can the third step is only to discuss about the loan details as per ibs model policy on collection of dues customer calls for recovery of dues should be normally to be made between morning 7 hours to evening 7 hours in examination they will not make as 7 to 7 sometimes they will mention at 7 hours to 19 hours so that is also correct 7 hours in the morning and 7 hours in the evening morning 7 to evening 7 12 hours so up to 7 hours it is possible the functions of the recovery agent under the agency agreement include the collection of the specified dues from the customer documenting reporting of collections reporting of developments to the principal and remitting the collection dues to the principal these are all the fun uh, functions the uh, recovery agent is under obligation to do this whenever he is entering into an agreement with the banker to do the collection so he has to collect the amount from the customer and he has to document everything he has to report the collection he has to report the developments in the collection process to the principal and he has to remit the collected amount to the principal in a loan recovery case the particulars of the security to the bank can be found from the loan agreement and its schedule so when you are approaching a customer now you should know what is the type of security he has given by way of charge so where from you will get the details the security details you can assess ascertain from the loan agreement a copy of which will be given to you by the bank or sometimes you may be permitted to peruse the document in the bank premises and its connected schedules so it will describe what type of security the customer has offered to the bank for the particular type of advance the laws and regulations which govern debt recovery of a bank dues apply both to the bank employees as well as the recovery agents so all laws or all regulations in respect of this debt recovery mechanism is equally applicable to bank employees as well as recovery agent it is not only for you it is for both of them that is employees also they have to adhere to this instruction last year exam this was a question so normally you will think that it is applicable only for the recovery agent not like that it is applicable for the bank employees as well as recovery agent the term debtor means a person who owes some debt to the lender or the creditor retail loans are generally granted to professionals salaried employees and individuals having regular income retail loans includes housing loans vehicle loan consumer loan consumption loan so here you see who is a debtor borrower is a debtor who is taking loan is a debtor who is the creditor banker is the creditor because the banker has to get back the funds from the debtor so borrower is the debtor banker is the creditor and sometimes mostly you will be asked to collect retail loans then you should know what are the types of accounts can be classified as retail loans loans generally to professionals salaried employees individuals having a regular income so individuals normally those loans granted to individuals can be categorized as retail loans some examples you can cite as retail loans housing loan is a example vehicle loan is another example consumer loan consumption loan etc all these loans are granted to individuals
mostly in individual loans that is retail loan the persons are asked to remit equated monthly installments every month it consists of principal as well as interest so in a retail loan the repayment is always by emi emi means equated monthly installment it consists of principal as well as interest a rupee card is a debit card or an atm card rupee card is developed in india npca is managing the payment so rupee card has been developed in house so far before introduction of the rupee card we were using visa as well as master card similarly so many other cards cyrus card also there still we are using that but they are cost most costly because the service charges are high but rupee card is defined uh, designed in india so it is cost effective that is why in no frill accounts we are issuing rupee cards to customers it even contains insurance benefit also credit cards provides buy now pay later so sometimes in examination they will ask buy now pay later is suitable to which type of card buy now means you are buying goods now and you are paying on a later date yesterday we have seen credit risk is more in a credit card because the customer is using the funds immediately and he is asked to remit the fund on a future date sometimes he may not remit it so there is a credit risk similarly here this slogan is applicable to credit card buy now pay later but if the slogan is like this buy now and pay now then it is a debit card you can buy the goods you have to pay it immediately because your account will be debited immediately so buy now and pay now will be a debit card buy now and pay later will be a credit card the validity period of a check or a bank draft is 3 months from which date from the date of issue from the date of issue it is valid for 3 months money laundering refers to conversion of money which is illegally obtained into the bank that is it has been obtained and it has been encashed or deposited in a bank so that it will become a good money that is that process is known as money laundering we have studied we have seen there are three different stages placement integration is it not placement layering and integration i told that is a sequence p l i placement layering and integration you should remember that in the sequence itself placement layering and integration fixed deposits cannot be transferred to third parties because it is not a negotiable instrument it is only a receipt given to the depositor in token of having received the deposit by the bank it is not a check so it cannot be transferred to any other person hence fixed deposit receipt is a non transferable instrument fixed deposit receipt is a non negotiable instrument it is only simply a receipt remember it a recurring deposit account requires the customer to deposit a fixed amount at specified intervals for a specific period every month the customer will be asked to remit one installment so that after a specific period it will be accumulated to a lump sum then along with the lump sum the interest will be given back to the depositor so this is a kind of fixed deposit wherein the lump sum will not be invested up front the deposits will be accumulated over a period of time as per the agreement between the customer and the banker so a recurring deposit account requires the customer to deposit a fixed amount at a stipulated intervals for a specific period demand deposits are those which can be withdrawn on demand any time it can be withdrawn example savings bank current account so these accounts are demand deposits why because at any point of time customer can come to the bank and withdraw it customer can uh, withdraw the funds from digital media through atm through internet banking through mobile banking through pos machines he can use it online or so online transaction also he can do flipkart and amazon attachment order in respect of bank accounts is issued by the tax authorities so attachment order means it is by tax authority garnish the order means by court both are attachment orders only if it is if it is issued by other than by a court it is known as attachment order if it is issued by a court it is known as garnish the order 
garnish the order is issued on the bank by the court. Payment bank can only accept demand deposits and the maximum outstanding in a customer's account should not exceed rupees 1 lakh. So payment bank, very best example is our India Post. All post offices are now converted into a payment bank. So they can accept deposit, they cannot lend money. They cannot lend money, that is true. They can accept deposits, but they are not supposed to accept fixed deposit. They can accept only demand deposit, that too, not exceeding rupees 1 lakh. That too, not exceeding rupees 1 lakh. This 1 lakh is most important. Demand deposit is most important. Okay, per customer. Small finance banks are required to provide at least 75% of the loans to priority sector. And at least 50% of the loan must be below rupees 25 lakhs. Similarly, just like payment bank, there are other banks in India, small finance banks. They are actually looks, uh, yes, uh, they are uh, similarly that of a bank in India, other banks. But there are some small, small restrictions. The first one is, Towards priority sector, there are several sectors which are priority to the nation. To that sector, sector they have to lend money 75%. That means if they are lending 100 rupees, out of that 75% should go to priority sector. Similarly, if they are lending 100 rupees as 100, uh, 100 crore, just imagine 50 crore, not less than 50 crore, should be for different customers with a maximum limit of 25 lakhs per each customer. That is every, the ticket size of the loan should be restricted to 25 lakhs so that the more number of persons will get the benefit. Reserve Bank of India was formed as per RBA Act 1934. So RBA Act is in 1934. It came into existence from 1-4-1935. At present, there are 12 public sector banks in India after the amalgamation mergers. The minimum number of members in a private limited company is two and the maximum number of members can be 200. So in a private limited company, minimum is two, maximum is 200. In a partnership firm, minimum should be two, maximum is 50. In a public limited company, minimum is seven, there is no maximum. So these are all the points which you have to make note of it. The minimum number of members in a public company is seven, there is no maximum number of members. So in partnership, two and maximum is 50. In a private company, minimum is two, maximum is 200. In a public company, minimum is seven, maximum there is no limit. In a limited liability partnership, minimum is two, maximum is no limit. Then comes small account. Small account can be opened by persons not having any officially valid document. What are the officially valid document? Aadhaar, driving license, passport, election ID, NREGA card, extract from national population register. Here some restrictions has been placed for driving license recently, but officially valid document. PAN is not considered as an officially valid document. It is a PAN is a document, a card issued by the tax authorities in India income tax department so that is taken out from the ovd category so suppose a person is unable to submit any officially valid document then he can open a small account with some restrictions what are all the restrictions number one restriction is maximum credit summation in the account is restricted in a year he can make a maximum remittance of one lakh into the account at any point of time, the outstanding balance should not exceed 50,000. And in a month, he can withdraw only up to 10,000 rupees. That may be a single withdrawal or by way of multiple withdrawals. But in a month, the total withdrawal should not exceed 10,000. So in a month, it should not exceed 10,000. At any point of time, outstanding in the account should not exceed 50,000. In a year, the total credits into the account should not exceed 1 lakh. Contact less debit credit cards. Work under near field communication technology. Wave card, it is known as wave card. 
you are not supposed to hand it over to the shopkeeper. You have to just wave the card in front of the equipment kept in the shopkeeper's office so that automatically your account will get debited. And you have to give the OTP, of course, or a PIN you have to use. So we under the, with which technology the contactless debit or credit card is working, that is most important here. The technology used is near field communication technology, NFC, which employs radio transmission to ascertain the contact when the cards are tapped or waved in a terminal, followed by an application of PIN. Mostly it is in the point of sale, that is POS. We will be using that in a petrol pump or a mall. Banks cannot charge foreclosure charges, prepayment charges in retail loans. There is a new guidelines given by Reserve Bank of India. So there should not be any prepayment charges. But there are some exceptions to that. If the customer himself is prepaying it, he should not be penalized. That means he is foreclosing. In the case of loan against gold jewelry, the charge created on the securities is by way of pledge. I said there are five types of charges. One is lien, suitable to fix and deposits. Pledge, suitable to movable assets. But hypothecation also, hypothecation also, it is uh, suitable to movable assets. Then what is the difference? In pledge, the possession is with the banker, whereas in hypothecation, the possession is with the customer. That is the difference. Then for immobile property, mortgage, and for actionable claims, just like LIC policy or receivables, the suitable charge is assignment. A recovery agent should not exceed the delegated authority. There, there, is, there are some authority. That is, a set of authority has been delegated to the agent. He should work within this framework. He should not exceed that. Banking ombudsman is a mechanism where Consumer that customer complaints, banking customers' complaints can be redressed. So, this is a prominent way of redressing a complaint that is banking ombudsman scheme. Under the scheme, the maximum award or the maximum compensation that the banking ombudsman can declare is 20 lakhs. So, the 20 lakh is the most important point. Banking ombudsman means you have to remember 20 lakhs, TRT means 20 lakhs and above. Lokatalat up to 20 lakhs. So everywhere you remember these 20 lakhs. Debt recovery process include normal recovery process as well as difficult recovery process. Normal recovery process, it doesn't require more efforts. If you are making a call, may very next day or in a day or two, the customer is remitting installments, we can very well say that it is a normal recovery process. But difficult recovery means you are repossessing the property. Just imagine that is not a normal process. You have to undergo certain rules and regulations as per the guidelines. Then it is very difficult. So it is treated as difficult recovery process. So a telephone call is a normal recovery process. Sometimes examination will be asked like that. Sending a notice, normal recovery process. Sending a lawyer's notice, normal recovery process. Repossessing the property, difficult recovery process. Filing a suit in a court of law, difficult recovery process. Filing a suit in a DRT, difficult recovery process. So you have to identify this. If the customer is not available during a few calls being made by the recovery agent, then you can leave a message only to the adult member in the family. And then you, it is, so you are supposed to give your name and your telephone number. You are not supposed to convey anything more than that. The purpose of visit should not be conveyed to the family member because the person is not available, the customer is not available, the borrower is not available. So you are talking to an altered person in the family member that only intention is you have called upon the customer on that day and he was absent. That is the only intention. So the message has to be given, conveyed to the adult member of the family. The time of visiting the customer will be generally 7 to 7, we have seen already. Visits earlier or later should be done only with the exceptional conditions. Suppose a customer is asking, he is working in a techno park software company. He is asking, sir, after 5, 7 only I will be free. Then you can visit him. Only with his permission you can visit. 
Recovery agents should not violate or breach the recovery policy procedures prescribed by the bank through guidelines. Recovery agent should not conceal or misrepresent his identity during the calls, visits, or interaction. No misleading misrepresentation of fact is required in there. You are not supposed to conceal your identity. Difficult willful debtors are those debtors who can pay but do, who do not want to pay. They are having sufficient fund. Purposefully, they are not remitting. So we can very well say that they are willful defaulters or difficult customers. They may avoid responding to your calls. They will not sometimes attend. May avoid meeting, meeting you. That is also possible. So these are all the some of the symptoms which are attached to a difficult customer. Recovery agent should record the recovery efforts for each debtor in a chronological order, which can be used as an evidence in a court of law if it is required on a future date. In the case of floating rate of interest, the interest rates get changed according to the market conditions. Floating means always it will change according to market condition. Security launched by the borrower or guarantor as an additional security to the credit facility is known as collateral. There are two types of securities. One is primary, that is the asset purchased out of bank finance. You are giving a car loan, bank is giving a car loan. So the car is a primary security. So whatever is the additional security the customer is giving, that is known as collateral security. So additional security is collateral security. The asset for which the bank has financed is a primary security. The main source of income for banks in India is interest charged on loans and advances. So the main source of income, the banker's main source of income, if there is a question from that angle, the main income is from interest. Thereafter, commission, thereafter, discount, exchange. They are known as miscellaneous income, non-interest income. So interest income is the main head in which the banker is getting money. Revenue. Similarly, on in deposits, the banker has to give interest. So the major expenditure of a banker is uh, interest on deposit. If you take the difference between this interest on lending as well as interest on loan and interest on deposit, you will get net interest income. Net interest income means it is nothing but the difference between interest on loan and interest on deposit. One you are getting, another one you are giving. So the difference is net income. Return of checks with the reason insufficient balance in the account is a criminal offense as per section 138 of Negotiable Instrument Act. Normally, in Negotiable Instrument Act, any violation is normally treated as a civil offense only. But only this, that is returning of a check, that too with the reason insufficient fund, most important insufficient fund. This will be treated as a criminal offense as per section 138, most important section 138, criminal offense, return of check, insufficient balance as per Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. The banking ombudsman, who is appointing banking ombudsman, the Reserve Bank of India is appointing banking ombudsman. Who will be appointed as a banking ombudsman? An officer in Reserve Bank of India in the rank of general manager or chief general manager normally will be appointed as banking ombudsman. There are 22 banking ombudsmen in India as on date. Among all the retail loans, the rate of interest on housing loan will be the lowest. If you consider the rate of interest for different loans, the lowest rate is for housing loan. Credit card holder will get credit period up to maximum 50 days. If you are a credit card holder, so buy it, pay later. We have seen, you buy the goods now, pay it later. How many days later you are supposed to pay the amount? That depends upon the contract between you and the credit card issuing company. Sometimes it may be 20 days, sometimes 30 days, sometimes 45 days. So the maximum period a credit card is allowing for a customer is 50 days. So from examination point of view, this 50 days is most important. So the maximum period or the credit period up to a maximum of 50 days will be allowed in a credit card. So remember that 50 days. The retail loan account is classified as NPA. That is retail loan means loans to individuals. When the principal and interest is in default for more than 90 days, we have already seen for loan more than 90 days overdue. 
for CC and over uh, the overdraft accounts working capital, it is out of order for more than 90 days. That is on the 91st day, the account will become in PA or 91st day can be represented in another way also more than 90 days. More. Bank can refuse to furnish the details of his customer's account when requested by friend of the customer, a third party. Friend is a third party. Even wife is a third party in the eyes of a banker in respect of husband's account. So banker can very well refuse. Banker is supposed to disclose only to the customer. Deposit receipt can be issued by branches only and not by the administrative office, controlling office, regional office. They are not supposed to issue deposit receipts. A customer can be an individual, one or more persons that is joint account holders, partnership, company, trust, society. They are all the types of customers dealing with the bank. Overdraft is a running account, just like CC, just like current account is a running account. It is nothing but a current account. Running account and interest charged on reducing balance only. Each and every day, what will be the outstanding balance that will be returned for calculating interest. So on a daily balance basis. Normally giving, normally given, taking fixed and deposit or bonds as security. Overdrafts normally we will give against fixed and deposit. Demand loan also we will be giving against fixed and deposit and other similar bonds and other securities. On a recovery job, whenever you visit a borrower, you may enter his premises or house only with the request followed by his consent. First, you have to take an appointment. Normally, you might have seen that, is it not? Nowadays, it is most common. If a person is coming to my house to, be, to call on me, that is to contact me, then definitely I will get a call from him minimum of half an hour before, sir, whether you are available now. So then I will ask, sir, what is the purpose of your visit? Then he will say, I am an insurance agent, I am a recovery agent, or I am so and so, so and so. Is it not? So that way you have to get the permission from the customer, his consent from the customer when you are entering into his premises. Only after his saying you can enter into the premises. So that you should you should have to keep the personal distance. Easily collectible receivables are represented by debtors who are willing to pay dues with a sense of duty. So this is slogan for you. Sometimes you may interact with those customers who are feeling a sense of duty because they will be thinking that I have taken a loan. Now you are reminding me, thank you very much sir, I will remit the amount, no problem. So that debts can be easily collectible. Those receivables are easily collectible because the debtors are willing to pay. Just your te telephone call will make him a reminder. Thank you very much, friends. I think this video, the second part, we can say the second episode of this kind will be useful for you in the coming examination. Go through this continuously. You read it twice or thrice so that you can remember these points. So examination will be very much simple, but a repeated reading is most important then only you can recollect. And moreover, you are getting multi-choice, multi-answers, multi-options. Four options will be given for each question. So if you continuous, continuously read this, you can very well recollect the exact answer from the given choice. So thank you very much for the patient hearing. And once again, I wish you all good luck in the examination. Thank you.